Hi, I'm Joe with Grandma Phone, and we're actually doing a pretty fair little business with a wonderful brand out of England called Cord. And we're lucky enough to be here today with Colin Pratt. Colin, great to see you. Great to see you too. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's actually our first time of working together. But we'd like to start out, I think, because probably a lot of you viewing this video may have heard of Cord, but may not necessarily know a whole lot about the brand. So maybe you and I can start, Colin, by just kind of introducing to our viewers what the brand is all about, and we'll do so using these two pieces, actually. Sure. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, Cord Electronics is a proudly British brand. Everything from the uh, huge mono amplifiers down to the, the, the smallest of products, Mojo, are all designed and built in the UK. That's something that's incredibly important to us and something we're really, really proud of. Two sides to that. One, it's a nice badge of honour to support your own country. And two, if there is a problem in production, you can sort it out really, really quickly. You're not waiting for product to come across the pond to discover it has an issue. We get in the car and we go and see someone who's literally maybe 40 minutes away. And in the true British way, we'll have a cup of tea and we'll discuss the problem and, and get it resolved quickly. So Cord Electronics was founded in 88, 89 by a gentleman called John Franks. He's still the sole owner of Cord Electronics. Uh, we're not owned by some consortium or some huge corporate entity. Uh, it's still his, uh, his vision. He was uh, a critical power supply engineer in the aerospace industry where he would make uh, power supplies, design power supplies for jets that would get you and I across the pond or for military jets. So you can imagine it's critical engineering. It has to be done right. Mm -hmm. um, he used his power supply expertise to make the power supplies in amplifiers. This is the latest in our amplifier range called Ultima, which we can touch on the technology and that later. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize is that Cord Electronics was actually an analog amplifier company supplying purely to the pro industry. Mm -hmm. So our DNA and heritage is, uh, is, is supplying studios. The very, very first studio that um, took Cord Electronics in was the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. Mm -hmm. Fastest accredited product in the BBC's history, which something to be proud of even to this day, um, from the BBC, Abbey Road Studios. Um, but we're in many, many other studios now. So Royal Opera House, uh, we're in EMI, Sony, Skywalker Studios. Uh, the Star Wars movies from The Phantom Menace, I believe, was all done on Cord Electronics. So, mm. And Cord Electronics has been proudly pushing the amplifier technology throughout its history. Later on, met a gentleman called Rob Watts, who specializes in DAC design. And I think in America, certainly, we're perhaps a little better known for our DACs because we make small DACs that are much more affordable, like Mojo, Mojo 2, cute, cutest range, um, decided to work together. And the partnership has been going strong ever since. So you have John Franks, who sticks his expertise into the analog, and Rob Watts is, is, the, uh, is, is the digital domain. Yeah. And I think two things we can say from our experience here at Gramophone, number one, is that we have found the products to be extremely reliable, which you would imagine that a company that has such deep roots in the professional world where reliability is crucial. It's key. If I'm as a, a consumer, it takes me a week or two to get something fixed, it's fine. But in the professional world, that doesn't fly. They need it to work. Yes. And then secondly, the performance obviously is also there as well because... Reliable is great, but that's only a building block. The performance is on top of that to really make things sound great. And you guys do a great job with that for us. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, a studio, it's a tool. A lot of people cherish the hi-fi. It sits on the side. It's a beautiful looking thing. You know, you cherish, you look at it, you listen to it. Uh, in a studio, there is none of the above. It's on, it's turned up, it's worked hard. It's a tool and it has to do its job full stop because yeah. every moment's on, it's earning its money. The second thing you've addressed, though, I think, is that in the world of electronics, it's great that you've got all these deep roots in the analog products that have been with us for a century or so now, really, when you think back to the first amplifiers. But there's some of the old school companies that are not necessarily so good at what is an excitedly new school thing, and that yeah. is the back. And you've really got a tremendous amount of engineering expertise in both amplification and DAX which makes you, for us, a great electronics partner. Yeah, thank you. And a lot of DAC designers, what they do is they buy a DAC chip, and I'm 
being very respectful of what they do because they don't have the expertise that Rob has, you know. So this is not a criticism. This is just an observation. Um, they would buy a DAP chip from brands A, B, C, D, and E for a couple of dollars. And you are then inherently, bu- you're buying the inherent flaws of these, of these chips, which is noise, jitter, lack of resolution, et cetera, or lack of resolving power, should we say. Um, and the expertise from some of these manufacturers would be extracting the best performance from these chips. Okay, so the inputs, the outputs, the power supplies, et cetera, which is a skill set in its own right. What Rob did, um, was Rob actually started as an advisor to the chip manufacturers. Mm. And he decided to pull away from this because he was a little frustrated that they wouldn't increase the audio performance because mm. it might cost 50 cents on the chip and 50 cents when you're selling millions and millions yes, of these yes. things, that becomes a considered cost. Uh, and Rob set about designing his own technology, the WTA filter, and that goes across all of the products from Mojo to QTIS to TT to our reference back, Dave. Uh, and he uses an FPGA to put the filter inside. And he looks, he analyzes all of the DAC issues that you would have and finds a way of engineering them out. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a, what well, the proofs in the pudding, the, the product's successful and they're a delight to listen to. Yeah. So with that as a backdrop, maybe now we'll just take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the specific products. Sure. So Colin, based on all of what we just talked about with cord electronics, immense background in amplification and in professional amplification, in talking about a product like this one, the Ultima 5, it seems to me there's really four kind of key points that if you understand them, you will all of a sudden understand a lot about cord and what you do with amplifiers. So maybe you can kind of do that deep dive for us. John Franks developed his own high frequency switch mode power supply in the late eighties. Okay. Now in our industry, that word can be a little bit of a dirty word because technically they can be noisy. So what John, as I say, take engineer out these issues. So in short, the mains comes in noisy. He filters the mains going into the power supply. The power supply then turns it back into DC, chops up an incredibly high frequency, so it takes it out of the human hearing spectrum. It then filters it on the output so that there is no noise then going into any of the sensitive circuits, whether it's in the amplifier or the rest of your system. You know, how sensitive is a, is a phono stage, is a, sure. is a cartridge? You know, you don't want dirty noise. Sure. It sounds trite and simple, but you know, there's a lot of noise out there that needs to be cleaned up. So you end up with an incredibly fast uh, power supply. So one of the key things about cord electronics is transients, 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 leading, stopping, starting of notes, the leading edge, speed of music, keeping up in time with the music. So you have a very, very uh, powerful power supply, very, very fast. You have uh, the power rails are coupled in like a magnetic flux. This is where it gets a bit sketchy for me because it okay. sounds a little bit like back to the future. But what that means is that your, your ground never goes unstable. These amplifiers are flat to below four hertz. Um, they don't clip. They take an immense amount of punishment. And you just get a very, very clean signal all the way through the, 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 the range that you wish to listen to. Whether you're listening to low volume, you want it still to be engaging. You've got neighbors. If you're lucky like me, you don't. And you want to listen to a bit of rock and roll, it takes it all the way through um, without any change of coloration or sound stage. Um, we use a whole ton of military grade caps. Now you can use a big cap, which looks great in marketing. But what is a cap? It's a well. It's got a, it's got to empty and it's got to fill. It's got to empty. It's got to fill. And the faster it can do that, the faster it can keep time with the music. Okay. So we use a bank of smaller caps. They far, they they you know they they empty and recharge incredibly quickly. Um, they're military grade, what's the joy of military? What's built on a Monday is the same as a Wednesday, is the same as a Friday. And you have stuff that's kept on the shelf, so you have continuity, you don't have parts discontinued. We're still servicing amplifiers from the late 80s. Wow. You know, something really, really proud of. Yeah. And then <clears throat> finally, the ultimate technology. So all of the predecessors were called SPM or some such, SPM numbers, et cetera, et cetera, or SPAs. So when John Franks worked on this Ultima technology, we had to have almost like a, a total fresh name. An Ultima was uh, marketing guys, I guess that's what they do. They come up with that. 
So what happens is you, you have a signal that goes into the amplifier. All amplifiers create noise through the amplification chain. All of them do. It's just some make less noise than others. That's right. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of that noise. Mm -hmm. So what, what the Ultima stage does is effectively it looks at the signal coming in, which is incredibly low noise, which we'll touch upon later when we talk about the DAX. Um, and then it hits the first stage of amplification. And then it actually mirrors it to what's coming out of the first stage of amplification. And then it can see um, the noise, the artifacts in the signal, and it can erase those. So it, you just get the signal being mirrored through each stage of amplification. So incredibly clean signal going in, incredibly clean signal coming out. And with the power supply, the number of caps, the, the, uh, the coupling of the power rails, you get incredibly clean, low noise, uh, low noise floor, low distortion, incredibly fast, very impactful. Huge not out power amplifier. The first time that we sat and listened to the integrated amp, which we'll talk about yeah. in a minute, the two things that kept coming to my mind were, you, you said incredibly clean several times, and it really seemed that the music we were listening to was just clean. Yeah. And the second thing you've referenced is with quick transients, mm. because I love, for example, progressive rock. Okay. And there's a lot of fast transient kind of stuff when there's all those yep. different notes and rhythms. And so I think you really can hear what you're describing when you listen to chord amplification. Absolutely. 